Finally, Necromancer can do billions of damage just like the Barbarian. And it's all thanks to two things. First is a brand new tempering that says lucky hit, 40% chance to do 20,000 shadow damage. And that tempering you can put on multiple pieces of gear to push the damage higher. And not only that, you can masterwork this tempering even higher up. I think I get it at 40,000 right now. The second thing would be the Eben Piercer Amulet. That's the brand new necklace for the Shadow Necro. It allows you to shoot out more than one blight. Now here comes the one issue that this whole thing has found out by the man Macro Beer Boy. Thank you, Macro. The Eben Piercer Amulet works fantastic. It makes your lucky hit trigger like crazy and suddenly you're doing gazillions damage. Your Ixfeld's Corroded Signet 10 times in a row. The boss HP bar just vanishing. It is a bug though, because as soon as you start shooting out those Eben Piercers, suddenly your lucky hit chance goes through the roof. My main question though is, it still is four more blights that all do damage over time and that all can lucky hit. So the build is valid, just that it's proccing a little bit too much. And even without the even PSA amulet, the build is working more than well. First gameplay loop, then gear skills in Paragon. And the loop is very simple. You're blood misting into your opponents, Corpse tunnels are coming out automatically from your ring of sacrilegious souls. And then boom, 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 boom. Shadow damage, shadow damage, shadow damage. Especially as you're nuking in blights into them. And with the aspect of the void, you're pulling them together and moving them around the battlefield to disrupt their counterattacks and completely overload them with lucky hit and shadow damage over time. And yes, it absolutely melts bosses. Let's talk gear and begin with the even pierce amulet. Movement speed, shadow damage over time, damage reduction from shadow damage over time affected enemies, which is so important for this season because of the lacking damage reduction, essence cost reduction, and then blight shoots four smaller projectiles out that deal damage over time. And all that damage over time can lucky hit. Now I said this lucky hit triggers too often, but if it was just normal triggering, there should be a lot of bonus lucky hit anyways. As your helmet, you're playing Juggernaut to really get this 15, 16, 20,000 armor for the 199 level opponents. We increase the corpse explosion size, maximum life, and helmets can now have a lucky hit chance. Yes, getting lucky hit chance is easier than ever. That goes for gloves as well. Can roll lucky hit chance there too. And you can master work that lucky hit chance. Importantly, darkness damage or shadow damage over time can be increased. More shadow damage over time is more shadow blight key passive damage. More darkness damage should increase the X-Files corroded signet. On the chest, we have the new hardened bones, which is the coolest necromancer aspect at this point. You and your minions gain 20% increased damage reduction or 25%. Just simple as that. More damage reduction. And you can get five ranks to corpse explosion. Yes, plus five like this. That's more shadow damage over time. And in general, a boosted corpse explosion is always good. On the gloves, we have a huge amount of critical strike damage and the new curse aspect that got changed from Iron Maiden and Decrepify Curse to you deal 50% increased shadow damage to enemies afflicted by any curse. Just like that, 50 eggs more shadow damage just when they're cursed and you have always decrepified them. Shadow is just insane no matter what version you play due to this little aspect. On the pants, we're still rocking the Bone Storm that we continuously have the barrier up to not die. Even though this concept is not working that as good as it used to in season three, because you're just taking too much damage. So usually you would rely on your bone storm to keep you completely healthy at any time. But if your opponents are shredding 30,000 barrier with one single hit, and then with a second hit you die, it can be complicated to even keep yourself alive, even with 30,000 barrier. Boots can now have bonus corpse skills too. Yes. That's even more Corpse Explosion and Corpse Tendrils if you wish to. Plus, there's an interesting thing called Essence Per Second. Not needed for this build, but Essence Per Second can be a greater affix, and that goes then up to 10 Essence Per Second, solving the Essence problem of any build. The one is running the Shadow Blight Key Passive 120% multiplicative bonus damage. That is still absolutely great. And then there's the tempering we talked about, the Elemental Surge. Lucky hit up to a 40% chance to deal 40,000 shadow damage. Now you can temper the same thing onto your offhand. This has the same lucky hit. Interesting thing is that this doesn't seem to be two lucky hit chances. So it's not a 40 and a 40% so that it triggers twice. It's more a total 40% and then added damages up. 
So now this is a total 40% of doing 60,000 damage instead of a 40 for 38 and a 40 for 29. It's just double, double. Can increase the darkness damage and even more lucky hit chance. So we get lucky hit chance on our off end, lucky hit chance on our wand, lucky hit chance on the gloves, and lucky hit chance on the helmet, which then gives us Ixfell's Corroded Signet with another shadow damage over time trigger. So we have the 40% to trigger our damage. And then we have the another 50% to trigger even more damage with more lucky hit chance that can get master worked. And here we have to talk about uniques because look at the unique lucky hit chance. It's only 10% as the cooldown reduction is slower or the damage over time. Generally, because you can't temper items anymore, they do have one more stand. But a lot of the uniques are objectively worse right now because I could take a ring, a normal ring with a higher lucky hit chance, with higher damage over time, with a higher cooldown reduction, and then I could master work it two times to make it even better. Even though the X-Files has this bonus of the 38% damage, even though the X-Files has the, his ability, the actual lucky hit chance here is better from the tampering, and you might actually just drop X-Files for another aspect that multiplies the damage of these two bad boys harder because they trigger on any damage, where X-Files only triggers on damage over time. Same goes for the Ring of Sacrilegious Souls. Sure, the lucky hit chance of the corpse skills is interesting. Technically, you only want the ability from the Ring of Sacrilegious Souls, and the rest is completely useless. That's where we might think about that some of the uniques actually need their stats a bit boosted or rerolled because this even piercer amulet for example is better than any of the other old uniques because the values seem just a tad higher than they would usually be and normal amulets with greater affixes are crazy as well i mean this one has 40 percent bonus damage just like that and my other amulet had 38 percent greater affix on total armor there's some madness going on there. Reapers are being sacrificed for multiplicative shadow damage. Skeletal mages are going out for bonus vulnerable damage. And Golem is going out for the critical strike damage because, yes, our shadow damage things can critical strike. Interestingly enough is you can play this with minions as well. You deal 3% increased damage for each active shadow mage. So you could just get the shadow mages to get the 15% anyways. And then say, just screw it with the 15% more shadow damage and have your dudes make more corpses for more damage over time. Since we're playing the damage reduction minion aspect anyways, and then on our helmet, instead of juggernaut, we could just get the bonus skeletons. So it would be really easy to turn this even piercer non-minion build into an even piercer with minion builds to keep boosting their damage and then actually kick Ixfeld's corroded signet out because it triggers only on damage over time anyways whereas the other one is better, and then have Ring of Mandeln that gets boosted by our Shadow Damage shenanigans too. It could be hard to get that into the skill bar though, and you'll see that in a second, because we're having a reap with Enhanced Reap, but we're not using our basic skill. Then we get the Blight into the Supernatural Blight with a 20% damage multiplier, which is great. We currently only have one point in Hood Flesh because we're getting enough corpses with what we're doing anyways that we don't actually need bonus corpses. But you could put one point in Grim Harvest out to actually boost the Hood Flesh by another point. Then we have five points into Blood Mist together with Ghastly Blood Mist for the corpses. And let's say we're going to take two points out of... Let's say we're going to take two points out of here to just to just boost the Hoot Flesh a bit and the Grim Harvest because our cooldown reduction is good enough anyways to have that going. And we have all the points in Corpse Explosion because if we're shadowing around, if we're already doing Corpse Explosion, we might do the most Blighted Corpse Explosion damage possible anyways, and we have 15 points in that. More movement speed into more damage versus Cursed plus the Decrepify and the Decrepify cooldown reduction. Which brings us into Reaper's Pursuit, 1.3 in Gloom and 3 in Terror, plus 1 in Crippling Darkness for that bonus stun. And nowadays, bonus damage. This is not only bonus stun, it's also damage. And interestingly enough, that lucky hit damage stun chance actually scales really high. You go from a 20% up to a 60%. And yes, there's temperings for Crippling Darkness as well. There might be a consideration to boost that lucky hit chance even higher for some more damage procs. We get corpse tendrils and corpse tendrils are making things vulnerable and then we sacrifice our minions for the damage reduction that's another layer of damage reduction so we have the 20 percent from the armor 18 percent from here the damage reduction from am our amulet as well and yet we're getting one hit with 20,000 armor which gets followed with a memento mori for bigger sacrifice bonuses and then three ranks and inspiring leader for the 12 percent critical strike damage bonus plus then bone storm into the supernatural bone storm bonus crit chance with a damage reduction and that's another 15 percent and lastly, the Shadow Blight Key Passive, which gets boosted by our damage over time bonus. And you saw there's a damage over time tempering that goes up to 80%. 
So alone your Shadow Blight key passive that triggers every Iggs can be made so much more damaging as well. Which brings me back to what I said about minions. I would need to have three points in scale to mastery and three points into scale to warrior mastery. Sure, these are the six points in standalone and memento mori. So that could be covered, but then we still don't have death defense and hellbend commander kind of going on. So yeah, it could be complicated to put the minions in. For the Paragon board, we're looking to make ourselves more survivally and shadow damage because shadow damage boosts all the shadow damage and the shadow damage rocks as well. So these 39,000 shadow damage gets another 100% bonus boost. Then we get the flash eater for the 40% multiplier to have our procs be even more procier and amplify for the bonus curse damage multiplier to also boost the damage to at least and the resistance to all elements. Then we get our wither note that our damage over time bonuses can randomly proc to do even more damage. Another damage reduction from enemies affected by shadow damage over time. So we have quite a lot of damage reduction followed up by more shadow damage over time to boost the shadow blight key passive. Then that gets followed up by Axumation, which gives us more corpse damage, more shadow damage over time with the corpse explosion, but more fortified damage reduction as well. So another layer of damage reduction while we pick up every single critical strike here left, right, and center to do even more critical strike explosions with that. And then lastly, the Essence Glyph for more critical strike damage and that multiplier as well. And you do notice how much damage reduction we have picked up, how much armor we have, and yet there is some absolutely random one hits. And I'm not talking about telegraph one hits. I'm talking about randomly getting hit by something weird and just dying. That is definitely something that needs to be addressed by either a damage reduction tempering or bringing back more damage reduction stats on gear. Now, again, the build works with or without even piercer, but the higher you get in the pit, the more even piercer is kind of necessary. But for leveling, this works incredibly well and shadow damage is... Now, if you're more interested in the summons, because summons are going to be the next super S tier, here's the best summon build you can currently make that absolutely rampages through the pit. Enjoy. Thanks for watching.